Paul Cody. All right. Praise God. Amen. I'd like you guys to open your Bible to John chapter 14, verse 9. Please. The name of my sermon is Fear the Lord and Walk in His Spirit. John 14, verse 9. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. God has been wanting to have fellowship with man from the very beginning. With Adam and Eve, he would come down in the cool of the evening and walk in the garden and speak with them. He walked with Abraham and he explained to him how he would inherit this land. And he instructed Joseph and placed him second in command over Egypt. But after Pharaoh died, the new Pharaoh did not recognize him anymore. <clears throat> after 400 years of slavery, God decided to bring the Israelites back out of bondage. And he instructed Moses to speak to Pharaoh to let his people go worship him at Mount Sinai. To hear the new laws of his covenant, the Ten Commandments. The Israelites learned the hard way to fear the Lord. They complained when things didn't go their way, and God got angry because they had seen him in the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. But they showed him very little respect. They set up a golden calf, and they prayed and thanked that idol, saying, You have brought us out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, but it actually was God's doing. This enraged God. They were used to living the life of a slave where they only did what they were told by others and not, not by the living God. God had to discipline them when they finally got out of hand and wanted to rebel against Moses, and he did. They finally made the promised land 40 years later when it only took an 11-day walk to get there, but their stubbornness kept them from entering in. God wanted them to hear and obey his voice in this new land, the promised land. Jesus Christ could see and hear what God had in store for him while he was here. Christ could see and hear what God had in store for him here. And he told Philip on John 14, 9, I do what I see my father do. And I say what my father tells me to say. The father and I are one. Let us pray. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that your spirit be with us tonight and each and every one of us, Father. Open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to your will, Lord Jesus. Give us the strength to understand your way, Lord. Write your will in our minds so we understand it. And write your will in our hearts so we obey it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jesus followed through and obeyed everything his Father told him to do, even to the very end. He asked the Father in heaven when he got there to send us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to guide and strengthen us. And God did. He did not pray for to God from here on earth. He prayed to God. He asked him in person. And this comforter will never leave us because he came from God. When this comforter arrived, Peter and all the disciples spoke with new tongues. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and those around them were saved that day. This is the same spirit that dwells within us here in this church. Amen. Knowing God and his Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection is the main purpose we are here on this earth. We will and can step into eternity when we learn this. There is no other way possible. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. This is true. <coughs> we can be forgiven and healed from our sins of the past, but only when we truly turn from these sins, because God knows our thoughts and our feelings, and he will not get serious about them until we do understand that we have sins that were unintentional and other sins that we did that were intentional. Sins from misunderstandings of this world and sins against us from people of this world. I pray and we pray to God and believe that Jesus Christ has forgiven us from all of our sins so we can reside with him forever because sin is a lot not allowed in his presence. There is an end to this story in the Bible which is actually the beginning of eternity. God has chosen this place on earth to live and reside with us in the new Jerusalem. And of all the planets he created in this universe, he decided to stay with those who love him, his own people. We have not reached the end yet, so we must do our best to convert to his will. The Israelites did not understand God's will, do we? Are we in the same position as they were, knowing that our promised land will be the new Jerusalem when it comes 
and arise in the future. We can learn from their mistakes and know that God wants to provide for us. And he does care for us. God brought us the Ten Commandments. Jesus came to fulfill the scriptures. And he gave us the great commandment in Luke 10, 27. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. We are doing this. And anyone that learns about this knows how important this really is. When I was in high school, my teacher would always say, these are the good old days. And I always thought that the old good old days had already passed. Now I have the same message for you guys. These are the good old days. And when we reach our goal in heaven, we can look back on these days and remember what we had to do to get there. God is asking us the same thing he asked and wanted from the Israelites. To obey his will and his way. And to be happy because he has another land that is better than the land of milk and honey. He will be there with us. Just like he was with Adam and Eve. This new promised land is the new Jerusalem. Be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world and we follow him. He is preparing us to enter this new place, just like God prepared them. And we will be thankful when we when we enter in. We can find strength and peace until that day until that day arrives by praising God in all that we do. God inhabits the praise of His people. This means that He is with us when we praise. Him. He does not leave us when we stop, but we feel His presence even more when we do. Just like a man that whistles while he works. Let us praise God in our hearts, in our minds, in our speech when we work. In all things, let us praise the Lord. And let us be happy because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad of it. Amen? Amen. The fear of God is not thinking that God will punish you for doing the wrong thing. The fear of God is knowing if we do something wrong, it distances us from God. Fearing that we can no longer hear his voice. Or even worse, that he can no longer hear ours. Jesus said, you will know the truth and it will set you free. He also said, you shall know the truth and it will make you free. God created this big world that we live in. But we all live in our own world. That we can arrange or rearrange things to put them in order. Let us find the will of God that we can share with each other and with everyone in this world. Richard and I were talking the other day before church, right after prayer, and I asked him, I said, was it hard when you moved into men's discipleship house? He said, yeah. I said, were you scared? He said, a little bit. He said, but each day that went by, it got easier. He said he felt the presence of God and the thought of Jesus telling him and strengthening him each day. So on the left side, he was thinking, he was talking of the world, and then the right side, he was talking of the spirit. We can live in the world of the past, and we can live in the spirit, which is with Jesus Christ, because we don't know what's going to happen next, but Jesus Christ does. Yeah. We need to follow his will and put our trust and faith in him. Amen. This is the message of the good news we have to spread that we have found that lives to the very core within us. It is written in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me read that again. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ used to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That sounds like it's within our reach. No. Jesus Christ also said the kingdom of God comes from within. Good. So we put all this together. We are trying to enter the kingdom of God from within us. We need to recognize that this same peace. Oh, wait a second. We need to recognize that this same peace is the same peace that Jesus Christ used. When he carried the cross to be crucified that he left with us. He said, this peace I leave you, this peace I give you. This same peace we could take and we could anchor it to our soul. We could stand on it with our feet and build from the ground up from this very day. The peace that Jesus Christ left for us. We accept it in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, and everything that we do. Amen. Jesus Christ gave us the Holy Spirit who helps us every day. And he knows ahead of time what to do. And he helps us accomplish God's will. I pray now that we accept that we serve an awesome God. Amen? Amen? And he hears our voice and he knows our thoughts. And he has the best in store for our lives. As we adjust our spirit to align with his. That we live our lives in accordance to him. And share with everyone the happiness that we have found by letting it show. 
I also pray that God lets us see what we need to keep our lives in our lives and what we must let go so we can find more room in our soul for his Holy Spirit to reside. Yes, that we can do. identify, honor, and respect his holy presence that lives within us. And we find it easy to understand his will. Jesus said, as I close, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Don't we need that? Yes. Rest Amen. for our souls. Amen. Amen. We all have been touched in this church by God, and that's what keeps us coming back. We are strengthened by his will every time we come back. Let us keep our eyes focused on him at all times. And in growing our fellowship strong, remember what Jesus said. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus' kingdom is in heaven. Yes. Our final yes. home. Yes. Amen. Yes. God said, God always wanted to have fellowship from the beginning. And he still wants to have fellowship with us today. So let us walk. Let us fear the Lord and walk in his spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.